energy economy beat expectations in the first three months of 2023, fueled by exports and household spending. Statistics Canada says first quarter growth equaled an annual growth rate of 3.1%. That's higher than what was forecast and is putting even more focus on the Bank of Canada and next week's interest rate announcement. Well, let's get some insight from David McDonald, Senior Economist with the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. David, good to see you again. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. So we will talk about the Bank of Canada in a few moments because I know people are thinking about what the interest rate might look like next week. But I want to start with the numbers we saw today from Statistics Canada. What stands out for you? Well, certainly much stronger growth than was anticipated. I mean, the bank was estimating just over 2% growth in this quarter. Uh, we're now up over 3%, so a bit of a surprise on the upside. Uh, this really reflects uh, quite strong growth in January in particular, if we start looking at the monthly figures. Uh, when we look at February, March, or April, the growth is positive in real GDP, but it's not overwhelming. And so this is, in some ways, speaks to what happened in January. The other thing I think that's important to point out was that there was a revision to the previous month's data, which was barely positive, and now it's barely negative. And so we, we have sort of, you know, the, the, the tail end of 2022 is pretty weak. January was pretty good. And then since then, it's been relatively weak again. So talk to me a bit about the specific sectors that we're seeing in, in those numbers today. We know uh, exports up, household spending up, but disposable income down. Housing, yeah. uh, the housing market down in terms of housing investment. What are you noticing? Yeah, so certainly uh, the, one of the big drivers has actually been the public sector. And so this is uh, education, health care, and public administration been one of the important drivers there. Um, we're seeing continued strength in professional services, particularly IT, uh, as well as food and accommodation. We're seeing growth uh, in this last quarter. One of the areas that has been consistently affected by higher interest rates and where we have seen big downward movement is retail cons uh, is uh, construction in the um, you know in the homeowner sector. So this is down substantially. It's been going down basically since interest rate increases started. And so insofar as there is a housing crisis and there needs to be more supply, there's certainly plenty of federal and provincial programs that are attempting to encourage more supply. Uh, on the private side, uh, but that's been utterly overwhelmed by higher interest rates. Uh, this, this is one of the predictable outcomes of higher interest rate is much lower investment uh, in the retail sector um, for construction, uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Okay, so let's talk about what this means for the Bank of Canada and for interest rates. Their next announcement coming next week on June the 7th, their overnight target has been at 4.5% since January. Should we be looking for another hike? I wonder whether the labor market uh, and the inflation numbers might be a more important indicator of whether we're going to see that. Uh, certainly on the labor market side, we've continued to see quite low unemployment and good wage growth. Uh, wage growth for the last three months have, has exceeded inflation. It's the first time that's happened basically since uh, inflation popped up about two years ago. Um, and the inflation number from last month at 4.4% was up slightly from the month before, and that's not at all what the bank anticipated. They anticipated that the inflation number would be down around 4% last month. Uh, this was, you know, surprising resilience in increases on rent in particular, as well as the price of grocery store food. Um, and so I wonder if they'd be looking at those figures rather than the GDP figures per se. I think that there's an expectation that inflation is going to drop substantially over the next couple of months, that it'll be back sub 3% by July, uh, in large part as we kick out the big increases from the annual series that we saw around this time last year. I suspect there's going to be a wait and see for another month or two's worth of inflation data um, with the expectation that inflation is going to come down. And if we don't see it come down pretty substantially in the next couple months to around sub 3%, uh, then I think that uh, you know, a rate hike is pretty likely. And so it has been a big political topic here in Ottawa. It was a big topic in the last uh, federal budget. What does all that mean? All those numbers you've been telling us mean for people who are concerned about inflation and affordability and the cost of living. What trends should they be looking for over the next three to six months? It does seem that once we kick the very high increases in inflation that happened around this time last year out of the series and, and we move into, uh, you know, just the last full year, uh, that uh, we will see inflation fall pretty substantially because the big increases weren't happening this year, they were happening last year. That's true for most areas with the exception of rent and the exception of grocery store food prices. Those really kicked up in the fall of 2022 and they are not going to be kicked out of the series 
uh, anytime soon. And so if folks are looking at those areas, uh, you know, affordability in terms of rent, affordability in terms of grocery store food prices, uh, there's no, you know, there's no real changes there. When we look at the housing market generally and attempting to purchase a house, uh, house prices have certainly fallen a bit, but they're actually up a little bit over the last couple months. Um, and there's just and, and this, the generation of supply is going to be much lower as a result of these high interest rates. And so I wonder whether on the affordability, either the rental side or the purchase side of housing, that's going to remain a substantial issue for some time to come. All right, I want to finish by taking this back to Parliament Hill. Uh, we did talk to you about the federal budget in March. The government had projected some modest growth at the start of this year, but did say there was a bigger chance of a pronounced slowdown. There was talk of a shallow recession this year, very little growth for the entire year. Do the numbers you're seeing now alter that projection? Does it alter the federal government's fiscal projection and what they are saying about the deficit and the debt? It's not clear that it changes substantially. I mean, the, there was early warning that the first quarter was above expectation and was going to be reasonably good, and that was relatively well known at the time. That has panned out to be the case, largely because of what happened in January. Um, the growth since January has been pretty weak, um, and those numbers get revised over time. And so the projection wasn't for that deficit, or sorry, for the, for the recession to be in the first quarter, but rather later in the year, second, third, third and fourth quarters, perhaps. That's still a very live possibility. Um, in the previous years, there'd been substantial upward revisions on the revenue side, not only at the federal government, but also at the provincial government levels, uh, due to much higher corporate income, uh, much higher profits, and so CIT rates, uh, receipts were up. Um, and so higher growth will yield generally higher revenue for the federal government as well as for provincial governments. And so we may see a bit of that, but it's still pretty early in this year to say whether, uh, you know, whether we're going to see some substantial revisions on the revenue side. Okay, well, keep watching. Certainly, David McDonald, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.